Welcome to the last year of humanity where we can be remotely certain that any work of art was created by a human. La mejor manera de matar a un unicornio es atravesar su cuello. Muerte, muerte al unicornio. From the creator of Bird Boy, My Threshold for Sorrow. Unicorn Wars certainly appears to be closer to a recognizable streamlined war story, so chances are it'll be more digestible than Bird Boy. And it certainly looks beautiful, so I am looking forward to more colorful dread. <laughs> the romance with the chair. Maybe. Not confirmed. But even if it is, look, Japan's mythology has a thing where inanimate objects can gain souls. That's what yokai are. Kind of. Still don't know why a chair? specifically, but it's Shinkai, the reviews are really good so far, just glad he's found his niche of teenage romances amongst natural disasters. And this will have a quick theatrical run in April. Oh, we're the Mario Brothers and Plummins again. We're not like the others who get all the fame. When your sick is in trouble, you could call us on the double. We're faster than the others, you'll be hooked on the brothers. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Not as much as others because I'm not a Mario person, but this has all of the signs of a good adaptation, especially in comparison to other video game adaptations, in no small part to Nintendo's involvement. And because finally, this one is fully animated. No more of these dumb CG hybrid celebrity vehicles. Please do this forever. The Bowser invasion alone has been one of the best things I have ever seen Illumination do. And the plumbing ad using the old Super Show theme? That was a great touch for nostalgia. And Chris Pratt, you're rich and I don't care that the internet makes fun of you. I just hope that you understand that this isn't really about you. It's about lazy celebrity casting. And yes, I noticed that they're trying to showcase his voice as little as possible, but it's, it's whatever, it's fine, whatever. But I can be somewhat more forgiving of your celebrity voice actor gatekeeping if the celebrities actually try to not use their normal speaking voice. So Chris does get some brownie points, but so far Jack Plack gets full marks. Still, if you're not paying your animators collectively as much as your voice actors, I consider your company a failure and a traitor. Who do you think you are? Really? We are supposed to be the good guys. I am so scared for the overhype with this film. Like, I know it'd be great, but I do have a problem of letting hype get to me. But I'm so excited! Can this at the very least break one of the live action's box office record? That's all that I want. Sorry. This certainly looks like Pixar returning to form, if we only categorize Pixar as only making Inside Out and nothing else. But this already looks like it has a lot of interesting visual potential. While we don't know for sure where they're going with this, it certainly looks like the next evolution in Forbidden Lovers, in that they literally can't touch each other. This doesn't remotely fit with the sociological metaphor, but I am always about someone trying to do something new with stories about relationships, especially showing different variants of relationships. And there is a solid possibility for some decent ace rep here. Oh, what a tragedy, they can't touch each other. How about they don't want to touch each other? Because, you know, they'll die. And that's why I feel like I might be expecting too much from this. But I am looking forward to it, and it certainly is one of the more unique premises. Ernest and Celestine 2, I am so happy. The original was one of the most cutest, wholesome things to get ignored during the year of Frozen. Hopefully this will bring more attention to them both. And yes, I know that the director of Ernest and Celestine is doing a movie with Illumination. Granted, director is not screenwriter, and screenwriting seems to be where Illumination has its biggest struggles, but no, I'm, I am looking forward to that. My sister, how do I find her? Follow the magician's elephant. Your hair. All I know is that this is based on a children's book written by one of the co-writers of Toy Story 4, who is also co-writing a musical about Atlantis with Pharrell. That is it. I must ask, is it right to trick people? <laughs> but trickery is what humans are all about. They're so keen on tricking each other, they elect governments to do it for them. 
Amazing Maurice is one of those technically last year films with a limited release this year. I was gonna put it on my list this year, but that video is already an hour and 15 minutes long? How the hell did that happen? Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna save it for next year. Uh, long story short, this is a Terry Pratchett Discworld book adaptation that does ultimately keep its original plot, but has to do the kid movie thing and throw some cliches and silliness in there. Death is in it though. So now for the movies we know are coming out, but just haven't gotten trailers yet. Teenage Mutant Turtles, Mutant Mayhem. I am going to be very sour about this given the premature cancellation of Rise, but it'll probably be fine and well received if the characterization is back to normal. I still oppose Donnie's glasses and his buck tooth. If you make him sound like Urkel, I will shove Legos between your toes. Chicken Run 2. We absolutely didn't need it, but I will look forward to it. Another New Gods. Laika's new film, Wildwood. Yay, more horror. Craig of the Creek, the movie. I finally binged the full series last year and I adore this. I have been missing this Kids Created Society, Kids Next Door recess energy. So yes, I'm very much looking forward to a movie. Nimona, finally, the one good thing Netflix did right before it shoved animation off a cliff. The possible Metalopolis and Venture Bros films, please let Venture Bros come out this year. Monkey King, the first official Americanized retelling, at least if you don't count Monkey Kid, which is already pretty awesome. There is another Trolls film, but you know what? DreamWorks is doing really well. And then of course, Wish. Disney's next original that will be a musical explaining the origin of the wishing star. I don't know how to feel about this. I just know that Disney does tend to do better with musicals than without them. Let me know if there were any movies that I missed. So let's run down to the series we know that are coming up this year. Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur has already premiered and has proven to be adorable, as well as My Dad the Bounty Hunter. Vox Machina Season 2, the D&D critical role-inspired adult series, is a big step up from Season 1. We fought a dragon, we got bits of everybody's backstory, some people we got too much, and Grog has been elevated to best boy. <laughs> Agretzko Final Season 5 <laughs> did not suck. Good, I have no idea what happened to Season 4. A production issue is the only explanation. I didn't like the final season as much as the first three seasons, but it is much closer to form and I can accept this as a finale. Haida has regained some points in my eyes, but one thing really irritated me. Nobody seems to remember that in Season 3 someone tried to kill this girl! Why aren't any of you putting her back into the public eye again? That's not a small thing, it's like constant irritant. And we got the last season of the Animaniacs reboot. I got some amusement out of this. I will miss Julia, genuinely, but I'm not that broken up that it's not continuing. You made a gigantic mistake trying to make another Pinky in the Brain Christmas and trying to excuse why Slappy isn't here when you didn't hire her voice actress, which is a former writer. You don't get to do that. Next month in April, we're going to get Agent King or Agent Elvis about what if Elvis was a secret agent? There's also the Gremlin series, the new Clone High series, X-Men 97, and has been Hotel should finally appear sometime this year. But guys, Animaniacs, fam, Dr. Stone, Season 3. Dr. Stone, Season 3. There's technically other anime news, and all of it is inferior because Dr. Stone is getting a Season 3. I mean, there's technically, like, an Attack on Titan thing, and a, and a Demon Slayer thing. The Villain Saga Season 2 has been going on Netflix, slowly, and Trigun Stampede makes me very happy that Crunchyroll has the original 90s series. Look, I am not gonna crap on the CG animation. It looks very good when they're doing action scenes. And I am definitely glad to have more Wolfwood, always. I would just still advise before people watch the new series to watch the old series so that the new series doesn't spoil the mystery in the first episode. All right, and the Owl House finale will come out in some point. The response to which I'm sure will be very calm and reserved and will absolutely not destroy people. Don't let the fact that Dana Terrence apparently dislikes happy endings make you nervous, okay, bye!